Would hen houses be a good job? Still as strong as ever, good on the feet and all too. And for moving these cattle today to field on down the back lane. That's to turn the beepers off. Took the trusty Tiguan down and they should hopefully follow me down. See if any running about. But uh, yeah, it's getting to that time of year when the grass maybe just isn't growing as fast, so you have to move them around a bit more often. They're not too bad, there's a wee bit of grass left in that field, they'll leave a wee bit of cover on it so it'll come back a bit quicker. But down here, I've got the creep feeder, so I'll hopefully get the calves onto the creep feeder. So we'll get out here and we'll move them across. I think they know they're getting moved, you can see them coming running down here. So we'll get them moved. The grass is very strong and wiry there. You see, they'll not eat that hard grass, but what can you do? You just had to work with it. You can see the nice wee bit of fresh grass in here, but I'll turn on the electric fence. Oh, she's definitely working. <laughs> I should hopefully know where to go here. Happy enough to get moved. There's still a bit of grass on that, but they're handy worked with to be fair to them. They know the drill by now. They're happy to get in there and so they've been in this field for probably this side for a week, the other side for a week, and then maybe a couple of other fields. So weather permitting, 7th or 8th of September here now. I'm going away for 10 days, so can't complain about that. But Hopefully they'll be out to the end of September, if it keeps going the way it is. I think I have enough grass to hopefully keep them going to the mid or end of September anyway. The longer you keep them out, the less fields you have to use, which is nice. So we'll see what happens. That's a class day there. Everybody will be at their silage and their barley the day, and why wouldn't they? It's nice to get her on the two or three dry days. It takes a lot of pressure off. All the farmers and contractors especially, because if there's only one dry day, they're flat out and ripping into a turn, but hopefully they'll get a good chance to get a get a pile of pile of work done. So even though I've got the creep feeder there, I'm gonna bring down the trucks as well to keep keep the meal going. So bring down the trucks and the lick bucket because I don't want them running out of vitamins and minerals. As I said a year ago I lost a cow. Took, I don't know, deficiency, grass tetany, I don't know what it was. So, a lick bucket's a lot cheaper than paying for the dead man to come and lift your cow and the cost of losing a cow. So, I'll keep the minerals at them anyway and see how we get on. So, we'll go get the minerals here now. So, boys, I think I found the ultimate farming vehicle the Volkswagen Teguan. <laughs> She's some. There's not many vehicles that can do, do it all. This yoke here, she's four wheel drive and she still gets about 45 miles to the gallon there, she can drive her every day. Does my job, uh, she hasn't let me down yet, 151,000 miles on the clock. But look at this here. Three barrels, a lick bucket and a truck all in the back. And uh, a bucket of meal and a bag of meal in the front. She's two liter there, so I don't know what the towing capacity is, something around 750 kilos or something like that, but I'd say she'd be fit for far more than that. So we'll turn her around here and take her right through the gate. Run through the field like that every so often does her the world of good. It's like a free MOT wash. <laughs> But I wouldn't be without her there. She's definitely, you know, I have no need for a big pickup. It's a nice wee size there, and as I say, you can take her wherever you want uh, for the four wheel drive. You can put big off road tyres on her if you want. But she's uh, it's just a nice wee size there, and you can use her throughout the week. I'd maybe be doing five or six hundred mile every week there, so something like that there is good. Good, good halfway house for me. So I've put the trucks well spaced apart there and one on the gate so they've plenty of 
plenty of room there. You can see some calves are in the creep feeder. The ring feeder is still out there from the start of the summer. Hopefully I'll not need any, any beef. But again, thanks everybody for watching the last video and commenting on it. It was another interesting video of people writing in there about their views on telehandlers and one thing and another. Um, back to the video on the future of suck cows. Uh, somebody, somebody who's quite positive about the future, well, thinks that there's maybe going to be a lack of calves in the future. Good quality, probably EU are grading calves, which is probably could be right, you know. But at the end of the day, when you think about it, are you better getting a bit less for your your lower grading calves and not paying to keep a cow for the year? Everybody has to do their own sums on that and figure out whatever works for them. And the dairy man, he'll start to get even more for his wee calves, so he'll be winning out of it again. <laughs> this is the lick bucket I use here. Wellman. Well, whatever's in it, super cow fertility. <laughs> they don't need to be fertile, but full of vitamins and minerals there, and that's. don't want to be losing any at this stage. Nice, nice cat cow there. Nice markings on it. It's out of a fleck, they. Blue out of a fleck, they. One of the last calvers this year. Smashing cow. I need the straight back on it. Maybe five year old that cow and she's still still as strong as ever. Good on the feet and all too. Like I really enjoy making these videos. I took a break there for a while, but now that I'm back into it I enjoy getting it's a bit of a community there, people with different ideas and different things and it's nice to to hear. I do really enjoy the comments, you know, I think that's what makes it a, a bit better where people are debating with one another and as the boy once said, like this, there's no two systems work well. Some people think zero grazing is the only job, and others that like the cows out to the field. Some people keep their cows in at night because they maybe don't have as much grass around the yard, or like there's not one system that works for one. And you can't blame one boy for doing one thing over another. It's everybody is right. <laughs> it's maybe one of those situations where everybody is right and nobody's wrong. So. Definitely, row your own course. Uh, do your own thing and whatever works out for you, probably is for the best. Would hen houses be a good job? I don't know anybody personally that has hen houses, but I would say if you had a bit of flat ground, you know, for the time to, the income would probably be maybe one of the better jobs. The arbol boy, he's under pressure there the next week or two to make sure all his crops are in. You're you're really, with farming you're at the mercy of the weather, but with the arbol boys there, they're definitely at the mercy of the weather. There's wee calves are going mad for the meal now, they're walking around searching for meal, but all the trucks, there's two still in the wee shed. Any more videos for a week or two for, uh, I'm going away to get married. <laughs> Everybody has got their own opinions on that too. Well, that's right or wrong, but nah. So I'll be away. I'm going on a big cruise around the Mediterranean. So I'll see you when I'm back. I'll hopefully be a bit more tan and a bit more sun out there, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.